New this morning, Lakewood police have given the all clear for students to go safely to school today after they determined a bomb threat against a high school was just a hoax. Police say they arrested a teenager over the weekend after receiving several safe to tell alerts reporting a bomb threat at Green Mountain High School. After several searches of the campus, they determined that there was no threat. New this morning, Denver police are investigating after a deadly stabbing near LaPan and Evans. They say that one victim was transported to the hospital where they were pronounced dead. Police say that they do have a suspect in custody, but they still encourage anyone with information related to this incident to contact Denver Metro Crime Stoppers. Happening today, the fate of the grocery store merger between Kroger and Albertsons will be debated in court in Denver. That's right. 90 supporter Brianna Fernandez joins us now live in Denver. Brianna, there's been a lot of fighting against this merger. Exactly. So the merger was actually announced back in 2022. These are the parent companies of King Supers and Safeway here in Colorado. And since they announced that merger, there's been a lot of legal challenges between uh, not only on a state level, but also a federal level. So we know that there's several lawsuits across the country, but here in Colorado, it's actually going to be a little bit different today. We can expect the Colorado Attorney General's office to make its case in a Denver courtroom against this billion dollar deal. So back in July, a district court judge ruled the merger had a reasonable probability of violating the law, specifically the Colorado Antitrust Act, which put a temporary pause on that merger. So antitrust experts say the merger would lower competition and drive up prices for shoppers. However, the CEO of Kroger insists the opposite would happen, saying the company would lower prices to compete with Walmart and Amazon. He says that they've done it before with previous mergers, investing millions and reducing profits to make that happen. Now, Colorado Attorney General Phil Weiser filed the Colorado lawsuit to block the merger permanently earlier this year saying the deal will create a mega grocery store with higher prices, fewer locally sourced products, which ultimately would lead to store closures. And we're worried about a repeat of what we saw last time. When Safeway and Albertsons merged, they spun off stores to a company called Hagen's. Hagen's was not able to operate their stores effectively. They either closed down or they were sold back to the merged firm. That was a disaster. We do not want to have this disaster happen again where consumers and workers and farmers will bear the brunt of it. Now, Weiser said the state would continue to pursue blocking the merger until the deal falls apart. As this trial is happening, the union representing grocery store workers impacted by this merger are going to be holding a rally. So they say this merger could lead to job loss and also impacts on supply chain. We know that rally is set to happen today at noon outside of the city and county building. And today's trial should last about three weeks. Of course, we will be keeping a close eye on this trial, both on air and online. We will bring you updates. For now, I'm live here in Denver, Brianna Fernandez for 9 News. Yeah, Brianna, a lot of people eager to see how this all shakes out. Thank you so much for your reporting. Today, the man accused of shooting his way into the Colorado Supreme Court building earlier this year is set to be arraigned. Police arrested Brandon Olson in January. They say he got into a crash, left his car, and shot out a window of the Supreme Court building. Then he took the Supreme Court keys from a security guard, fired shots in the building, and started a fire in the stairwell. Olson is in jail on suspicion of robbery, burglary, and arson. His arraignment is set to start at 8.30 this morning in Denver. Looking ahead tomorrow, the brother of Nuggets MVP Nikola Jokic is set to be back in court for a plea hearing. Video of Serhina Jokic shows him punching a fan in the face during a game against the Lakers back in April. According to court documents obtained by Nine News Investigates, the fan was later diagnosed with a concussion. When investigators approached Jokic, he claimed that he was defending an older man in the stands. The plea hearing is set for 8.30 tomorrow morning. Former President Donald Trump campaigned in Erie, Pennsylvania yesterday and told supporters that he will be back in the state next weekend to hold another campaign event in Butler. That's the site of July's assassination attempt against him. And he says he is looking forward to it. We're going back to Butler. You're going to be there. We're going back. We have a lot of people coming, and I really believe that will be the safest place on Earth. Trump suffered a wound to his ear when gunman Thomas Crooks opened fire. One rally goer died that day and two other people were wounded. Vice President Kamala Harris was in Las Vegas on Sunday as part of her campaign visits to Blue Wall and Sunbelt states. She began her speech by addressing the ongoing efforts for recovery in those areas devastated by Hurricane Helene, saying the administration is doing everything it can to help. 
She also continued her, her efforts to get former President Donald Trump to debate her again, telling that uh, the crowd that she was, quote, all in. I'm trying to debate Donald Trump again. And I think he should debate again. The American people have a right to hear us discuss the issues. And as you say here in Las Vegas, I'm all in. Today, Harris is cutting her campaign trip short to take part in briefings on the federal response to Hurricane Helene with plans to visit the southeast. Tomorrow is Jimmy Carter's 100th birthday. The 39th president is already the longest living president in U.S. history. He's been in hospice care for over a year and a half. Carter will spend his birthday in the same Georgia town where he was born in 1924. It's 608 now and right now health experts are urging parents to get their babies vaccinated for RSV. The American Lung Association is launching a new campaign for the vaccine, which can prevent severe sickness. They say nearly 80,000 kids are hospitalized each year with RSV. Doctors say that the fall is the best time to get the shot. This is the peak months we want babies vaccinated or given the shot, which is September and October because RSV usually peaks in December and lasts all the way through March. So we want to make sure these babies get adequate protection. Doctors say that babies under 12 months old and young children with weakened immune systems are most at risk. Well, one thing to know about the weather for today and main weather impact will be slightly cooler temperatures and a bit of a breeze out there on this Monday and the final day of the month of September. Mostly sunny skies, 83. We got a cold front later this morning. That'll kick up that wind a little bit for especially early this afternoon. But if you think today is on the cool side, well, I'll show you tomorrow's forecast, which does cool down before, of course, we warm right back up again. Details on that full seven day forecast for you in a couple minutes, Keely.